Hello friends, this is Helen Yancey and we're going to talk today about furry friends. My furry friends actually. This is Charlie and Henry and they have two different kinds of fur. So what I want to show you as, as quickly as I can is how to make fur working with a photograph. Now in all truth, it's the same way you would make fur is if you weren't working with a photograph, if you were painting freehand. But today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work with a photograph. This is Henry, and he's a brat. He's a, a year and a half. This is Charlie, and he's nine years old as of this month, and he's tolerant. I think you can even tell. How we're going to do this is I want to show you, first of all, the brushes that I would use um, and I will tell you honestly, I use all kinds of brushes and I change my mind a lot. Um, but today for this tutorial, I want to keep it fairly simple uh, and fairly clear as much as I can. So I'm going to use brushes that come with Corel Painter 2016. Um, they're very standard brushes and they're um, delightful brushes, delicious brushes. And I will tell you that this is how I normally work. Um, I always have a piece of paper here, and that obviously is a blender so you can't see anything. I have a piece of paper document where I test all my brushes before I use them. I don't want to be surprised and as many times as I use these brushes, I want to be sure of what I'm going to get um, every time. And I want to make sure that I haven't adapted it and forgotten it and um, that sort of thing. So the brushes that we're going to use today, let me show you, are, and I have called this palette, this is a custom palette. You can find it under window, custom palette in your organizer. I have several in there. The way you make a custom palette is really quite simple. You put your finger on the shift key first. You click on the brush that you want and you stick strictly drag it out. Now it dragged out into a new palette and I've already got it in my palette so I don't want to do that. But that's how easy it is. <clears throat> And when you have one in your custom palette, you can add more to that same palette. What I have done here, just for the sake of clarity, I have real clumpy broad bristle. I'm sorry, yeah, real clumpy broad bristle, which is in the category of artist oils. So far, I haven't adapted it. I have real oils filbert that is also in the artist oils. I have an eraser because there is an eraser in every custom palette I make. I find for me, because I use layers all the time, I find for me, uh, I would rather in Painter use an eraser on a layer to get rid of something I don't like than to use a mask and keep something I don't like. Uh, strangely enough. In Photoshop I use masks all the time, but I'm not painting in Photoshop. I also have Coarse Smear Blender. Um, this is Coarse Smear Blender Jitter, and that is in the blenders category. Detail Oils Brush, that's in the oils category. Detail Oils, and what else? Smeary Round and Smeary Round is in the oils category. Those are the brushes we're going to use today and we'll make it uh, as uh, hopefully as educational as possible. Now I want to show you the very first thing. Here's the palettes that I use on a day-to-day -day basis unless I'm doing something different than my ordinary work. Always, of course, I have the color wheel evident. Always, I have the brush calibration tab out because I want to make sure that each and every brush is calibrated to my hand. And when I do that, you, there is a general uh, brush tracking when you open Painter and you can use that. 
but it's only general. I want to do this on every brush I use. So I click on that little icon and I do this and then it reads my hand. And that brush will now be calibrated to my hand. The other one I have docked up here together with uh, color and brush calibration is blending. And I, anytime it's available to me, I want enhanced layer blending. And there is a tutorial when you open Painter that will explain that, but it is a big improvement in Painter 2016. It helps the brushes when you are on a layer to behave like you expect them to behave. So anytime it's available to me, and it isn't always, I use it. And you can see these beautiful little um, tool tips that come up and help you remember what it is you're doing or remind you or teach you. Okay, I also have this tab open most of the time. Um, I will put it away if I'm not gonna use it, but I must have my layers tab, my clone source tab if I'm going to do a clone, and Navigator helps me know where I am. So that's what I have up now. General and dynamic speckles are there if I need them. So let's get started. The very first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer. I don't want to work on my canvas. So I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to pick up a color. Now, Henry and Charlie have different kinds of hair. So I want to see, I want you to see. These have not been worked on at all. This is straight out of the camera. And I have picked up a color. I'm going to pick up a highlight color. I have Smeary Round right now, and it is in its um, natural state. It ha I haven't changed anything, I don't think. And all I'm going to do is wisp in some fur. I love Smeary Round. And I want to show you the way each brush works. So I'm going to fill, um, well, I can do it this way. This is the way Smeary Round looks. Let's pick a darker color so you can really see it. And you can see it has hairs in the brush. I'll make it bigger so you can really see it. It has hairs of the brush. Let's see how Real Oils Filbert works. And it has hairs of the brush as well, but it's oilier. It has um, more, more bleed to it, more um, thickness to it, but it is a lovely brush and it acts like oil paints. Then there is the Real Clumpy Broad bristle and I'll make that one bigger and you can see how that works. It's similar but it has more bristles in the brush. Detail oils brush, that's exactly what it is. It's detail oils and it works very well for, for what it says it is. Let's see, what didn't I show you? Uh, coarse smear blender. This is why I like, I love this brush, love this brush. Because when an animal has hair like Charlie, which isn't furry like this, he's got a different kind of hair. So I'll show you how that's gonna work. So we're gonna go back to, let's see, what do I really wanna use? I'll go back to Smeary Round. And with Smeary Round, it's way too big now because I changed it. With Smeary Round, I am going to pick that highlight color again. Let's pick a real highlight color. And I am strictly going to wisp in some fur. I'm not being super careful. If I did a clone, I could use the clone um, color. But I kind of want to do this a little differently. Instead of painting with a clone right now, I want to paint with paint. 
on a layer. So I'm using the highlight color first and I'm just wisping in some hair. And you can see how this is working. I want to make sure he's separated from Charlie. Now that's coming out heavier than I want. So I'm going to try to kick up the feature, which is hairs of the brush, and drop down the opacity. And let's see what that'll do. Yes, that's going to give me more hair of the of the hair of the dog, if you will. So let's do some more. And let's. I do have. I don't have pick up underlying color selected because with the blending now um, wherever it may be there it is with enhanced layer blending I don't have to do that however I do find I like to do it sometimes because I want to pick up underlying color so I'm going to do that now I'm going to click on this little icon right here and pick up underlying color and with the reset as low as seven, there. Now that's what we'll do. We'll pick up underlying color and we'll make this furry dog. Now, in uh, 2016, Painter has made available to you some fur brushes and particle brushes, and they're lovely. They're a little bit hard to control when you're first learning. And I thought we would do this one with just the normal brushes in in painter and then when you get braver and more experienced you can try those um, i will show you how a couple of them work but you can see what's happening to henry we don't have a whole lot on that layer but we do have some and enough that henry is soon going to look like a painting and that's the goal here we're going to groom him along the way Henry will get groomed and this brush is working absolutely beautifully as it always does I use smeary round often sometimes I will take the reset all the way down to zero and use it as a blender because it works so beautifully as a blender so you can see what's happening to Henry He's got that much paint on him now. Now here, I'm going to pick up the color, but I'm also going to make sure that it's picking up the underlying color as well. Because we want all of that. We want all of Henry's fur to look like fur and look like it's painted. Now here, where his hair is more curly, that's going to be a little bit, a little bit too liney, if you will. Real brushes wouldn't look like that. So I'm going to change my brush for this area to Real Oils Filbert. And let's look at that area again. I'm still going to use Pick Up Underline Color. I'm going to drop the um, opacity and I'm going to drop the size because we made that size way big and we don't want to do that. Feature is at two. We could probably make that a little bit higher and let's see if we like this better. Yes, I do. For this hair, this needs to be not so uh, stringy, not so liney. Like I said, um, the real brush wouldn't be like that. And you really, that's your goal. You want, you want this to look like real brushes would make it look. And groom them as you go. Now, if you like working with a clone, and I, I do both things, I do Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I always work with layers, and that really is an always for me um, because I want to see that I have not changed things too much. I want to see that the picture that's underneath, I intend to completely cover it as I go, 
but I still want to see what it what it is that I'm covering up so that I don't lose the likeness unless I wish to lose the likeness. Now you can see what's happening here. We're getting more brushy. Let's take this down so you can see it more. I'm liking this brush and as you can see what happens now is we are literally covering the photograph. So you know when somebody says oh my goodness you paint on a photograph that's cheating. Well you know what if you were painting on a canvas you would draw it first. Is that cheating? Same thing same principle don't apologize for what you do because what you do is important, what you do is beautiful, and what you do makes people happy. And the best part is, it makes you happy too. So you can see, we've got lots of paint on there now. And I'll show you, um, let's, let's try the Detail Oils brush. Obviously, we're not going to complete this whole thing in one tutorial, but see the brush strokes and with this detail oils brush I can't use it that big so I'm going to bring it down I'm going to make sure yes that it has calibrated to my hand because my hand is different than your hand so I need it to be calibrated to my hand now I'm going to pick up underlying color and all I'm going to do is reinforce what's already there except I want it to be painterly. I want it to be a painting. Now I'm going to find my colors and put in his catch light. Maybe put in just because I know it's there and then I'll take the reset out and blend that a little bit because that's what you can do when you take the reset out. You can blend what you did or you can blend what what you didn't do. You can blend what's um, like I don't want that catch light to look like I poked it with a brush. I'd rather have it look more painted. Now back to the fur. I'm having a good time. I hope you are. This time I'm going to use Smeary Round again and make my brush a little smaller because I want, I want, yes, I want details, 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 and more hair. And since he's mine, I'm going to know whether I'm changing his expressions. Dogs have expressions, you know that. But see how furry he's getting? Now this is just one of the ways that you can do fur, but um, truly you can do it with pastels, you can do it with chalk. It all depends on the look you want to get for your particular painting. And I'm having a good time. I haven't done his ears yet, nor have I done around his nose. Now I have to pick the right color there. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to, um, to, to, to the Real Oils Filbert and make it smaller. Now I will tell you if you use an art pen for this you can turn it and that's really nice to be able to do that. Um, it took me a long time to, to fall in love with my art pen but once I did I fell in love with it. It's just another tool in your toolbox if you um, are so inclined. But learn painter first, then get an art pen, because what you'll find is you can only learn so many things at one time, and you don't want to be too hard on yourself. There, oh Henry. Henry, you just never look so good. Actually, that's the truth. Henry really never looked so good. Now, the one thing you have to remember on that nose, there's got to be a light. There's got to be a highlight. And there's got to be big darks. So I'm going to make big darks. 
But more than anything, again, I want it to be, I'm going to take the opacity down on this and make it smaller so I can just blend that. And I could blend it with Smeary Brown too, if I so choose. Another good blender, if you want to try it, is take your captured bristle in your acrylics category and take the reset out and that makes a beautiful blender too that will be brushy enough Let, i'll show you let's show you yeah i have in my um brush box if you will the original captured bristle variant and the new one um, that comes it's called captured bristle 2 wherever it may be Well, there it is. You can tell I used the other one. Now I'm going to take the reset. Oh, Helen. I'm going to take the reset on this down to zero. And you can see that this makes a lovely blender as well. Now this is the one that comes with 2016. But if, um, when you get your, your painter package, when you get your software, it has the old brushes in there too in the library and you can import the ones you want into your into your workspace or put them in your your custom palette i do use my custom palettes a lot i enjoy them and they help me uh remember what i did the last time when you do use a custom palette remember go to organizer there's my furry brushes. I did rename it. It was called something else. And then export it so you have it when you open it up again. Or if you change your workspace, you can import it into a different workspace. So always export. Now see, I have not worked on Henry's ear. And I do want to do that, but I don't want to do it with a brush that I haven't been using. So I'm going to go back to smeary round and let's see we'll pick that color now i think i'm going to put it right back to its when you when you restore or reset your brush which is right there you have to calibrate it again which is no big deal but and i guess you can save it with that calibration in it but since i changed my mind a lot I don't save my brushes with every little detail because if I do, then I have to, I end up with too many brushes and I'd rather stick to the ones that I know work the best and make me happy and making me happy and also earning a living with it. Um, but you know, it's not about that. It's about being able to paint and everybody can paint. Now look how pretty. Henry's ear is now painted. Let's take a look at Charlie's hair. His hair is different. So while he does have hair, he also is, his hair is very curly. So I can't paint the big long strokes with Charlie like I would with Henry. So I have to do him differently. So in the detail areas, I will use the smeary round. And actually, I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller. In the detail areas, I'll use that. But I am going to use that clumpy brush. Let me get this a little smaller so you can see. First, we'll do these. And probably Henry had just had a glass of water. Glass of water. Sure, my dogs drink out of glasses. Um, water. And that's why he's got those dark things. And the funny thing about it when you photograph animals, they don't always do what you want them to do when you want them to do it. So you have to be prepared to take care of the matter. So. Uh, that's why I'm I'm not worried about the little dark strokes 
I'll just make sure. Now I'm going to pick up, uh, do a couple undos there because I didn't have the right color. It is important and I am just throwing in some color in here now, as you can see. I just, I want to make sure he doesn't get a fat head because if you're working away and not paying attention, you can lose the structure and structure is what it's all about when you paint whether you're painting organically or whether you're painting um, digitally, doesn't matter. Lose the structure, you lose the customer. Lose the structure, you lose the likeness. Um, if that's what you want, fine and good. But I want structure in my pictures and in my life. So see, I'm even going to go over here with that dark color. There. Okay. Now, I did that. I'm going to go back to, I want more feature in this now, and more reset so that I get, come on, so that I get more paint on it. So let's try that. So I separated the hairs by adding, my, making my feature number higher. I'm working with the lighter color and now I can just sweep it into that dark area. And we'll make this quicker. I'm not going to do the whole thing, obviously, in the interest of time, yours and mine. But I want you to see how easy it is to make a painted puppy. So. We'll put some paint on this and then I want to show you how that other brush works for the um, clumpy, the clumpy hair that Charlie has. Charlie's an old guy now, but he can't, he, he's an old healthy guy and he's got to stay that way because these guys are my my best friends, my assistants, my helpers, and <laughs> and my craziness. That's these guys. Okay, let me show you. I'm going to bring some of this hair out because that is the way Charlie is. Now, needless to say, I would have painted the background first because I would be painting into the background but we're not talking about backgrounds with this one. You're cute, Charlie. Okay, let's do his nose and under here. Now I want to show you that really on his ears, he is not so clumpy. On his, all actually he is though. He's very, very curly dog. And this is the way you would do a curly hair, too, by the way. Don't be afraid to just wisp it around. And I should add another color in there just to give myself some depth. Now, let me show you how this brush works. This is coarse smear. Here, I'll show you. Coarse smear blender jitter. It's in the blenders category. I'm going to make it smaller. That's way too big. And I want to make no, I'm not calibrated. So I'm going to reset it. Make it smaller. Let's see how big is that? Yeah and calibrate. Ugh. See, what a difference. And it will make a difference. It'll make such a difference for you. Now watch how this brush works. It's way cool. Way cool. I'm going to make sure my blender thing, yep, my enhanced layer blending is working. But I do have pick up on underlying color working as well because I need to. I want to make sure this is actually working on the layer. It does not appear that it is. 
So in this case, in order to use this brush, I will have to drop down to the canvas or pick a different brush. That's my only choice with this brush, unfortunately, which I wish it wasn't because I want to show you how beautifully it works. So at this point, if I want it to work like I want it to work, I will save this. I do an iterative save. See, now it's 002 and I will make a clone. Now I will be painting on the canvas of my clone and now I can use that brush and see when I cloned it even though this is flat now I still have my layers on my other one but I've cloned it and I can work on all the layers at the same time and you can see how this brush will work on Charlie's fur. It's way cool. Way cool. Uh, I want it to be heavier. See what that's doing? I want it heavier even than that. So by kicking up the um, opacity and the grain, it's going to pick up the paper texture and it's going to make Charlie's hair look like Charlie looks and he'll it'll still be a painting which that you know that's the goal I hope you can see what this is doing let's do it in here where you can really see see what that's doing and that is that is Charlie that is the way his hair is it may you're seeing a very enlarged portion right now. Let's do it here and you can see this. See how Charlie's hair is. So this is just way cool to paint with this blender on Charlie's hair. <laughs> 